Well, um, without a, any introduction, is an icon, a, a mentor, someone we all look up to throughout this whole country. And I'm really proud that she's here with us today. Is Congresswoman Maxine, Auntie Maxine. Thank you very much. I'm here for several reasons. First of all, I'd like to thank Councilwoman Hutt for the courage to do what she's doing today. And when I say courage, I want you to know that there are too many elected officials who would not dare mention the name of Malcolm X. And so, here she is, a young woman in city council, haven't been there that long, but dares to provide leadership to say that we must honor those who honored us, that we must care about those who cared about us. We must understand for those who have been undermined and criticized and even made sacrifices for all of us, we've got to let the history books know that we understand who Malcolm X was and what he stood for and how he spoke for us and about us. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, I've been around for a long time. I knew Malcolm X and I went to many of the venues where he was a speaker. And I can quote you many things uh, that he said, but let me tell you what stands out most to me. When others were demeaning us, when they said we weren't worth anything, they told us not to like the way we look, they told us that we'd never be anything, they discriminated against us. Racism was rampant. Malcolm X said, they're all wrong. You are important, you are special, you are to be respected, and you are to fight for it. And he was one of those who subscribed to the theory, if you fight, you can win. But if you don't fight, you'll never know right. whether or not you could have won. Right. And so, I want you to know to honor him and his 98th birthday is very special. He was in this community, he was downtown, he was on uh, television, uh, he was on the radio, he said things that others had never dared to say. But I want you to know there were some young people who heard him. And one of those young persons was in my office when he decided 30 years ago that he was going to make sure we honor Malcolm X. He's standing right next to me, Tori Reese, yeah. Torrance yeah. Reese. 30 years ago, he made this decision and he stuck with it. Now, what is the lesson in all of that? The lesson in all of this is, if you really care about something, you gotta be willing to fight for it. You've gotta be willing to take the licks. You've got to make the sacrifices in order to get others to see that you're serious. When they see that you are serious, they will join with you. This celebration, this naming is all about taking charge. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to say, can I, should I, will we do this? When you're Heather Hutt, you say, I'm going to do it. That's right. That's right. When you are a, a Tory Reese, you decide that something is wrong. And something is wrong because you've been listening uh, to a voice that spoke directly to us. He spoke to young black men in particular. He spoke about the fact uh, that you were back then targeted by the people that we pay to protect us and to serve us. He knew then that young black men were deemed to never have a job and from the cradle to the grave in prison. And so he talked about all of these things. When you hear us, those of us who are willing uh, to talk about these things, it's not new. We are literally living on his work and what he cared about and what he did. So here today, we are. Heather Hutt, give her a big round of applause. 
and this is not political at all, but she's running for office. Hell, we're going to vote for her. We're going to elect her. We're not supposed to say this, but I don't ever ask permission for what to say. And so we've got to elect her. Tory, Reese, who dedicated his life, who started in my office 30 years ago when I helped him to get the 501c3 to move forward, deserves your applause and your appreciation. Give him a big round of applause. Now, when we leave here today, Heather and Tori, if we don't have everybody in this audience deciding that they can do something more than they have been doing, that they're not going to just sit on the sidelines while we are being undermined and while our history is being stripped from us and while our young people are still being targeted by the people we pay to protect and serve us. If you're not going to write a letter, if you're not going to get on the internet, if you're not going to give a speech, if you're not going to rally, just go on home uh, because uh, it doesn't make any sense for you to be here. But if you're going to join in the struggle, if you are in any way, any way today impressed and any way today made to think that, you know, I've got to do more. I haven't been doing anything. I've been saying somebody else is going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it but you That's and right. I. That's and so I'm proud to be here today with all of you. And of course, my work is in the Congress of the United States of America. All right. And when they take any opportunity to disrespect me, to cut on my time, I simply say, I reclaim my time.